from a dude in a standalone trailer one time. Not a trailer park, a solo trailer. The most terrifying housing situation that exists. Like where other trailer people are like, get the fuck out of here, they kick him out. I just walk up to that shit, 15. And this dude's like, you trying to get a sack? I was like, oh shit, yeah. He goes, we could go do that. I was like, all right, cool. And he goes, we just need to go get it. I was like, you don't fucking have it? Isn't that your sole responsibility? So I tried to play cool. I was like, all right, let's go get it. He goes, I'll go get it. You stay here and watch my place. And I was like, okay. And he goes, there's a 357 and a shotgun on my bed. Anybody comes in here, blast him. Inside, paralysis. But what I said was, that's what's up. Like, yeah, man. And then he stopped at the door and he goes, but don't shoot my mom. I go, can we get a description before we agree to terms? How about a height and weight on old mom? Tent pirates, plant parents, conscious consumers, and the morbidly curious, welcome to Cultivation Conversation, a podcast for growers by growers. Come chat with our hosts, Captain Autoflower, the real green monster, and myself, Girl Go Grow. Grab a bouquet of your favorite flowers, apparatus of choice, and don't forget the fire while I tell you about the special companies that help keep this ship afloat busy people and we demand the best for our plants so all three of us automate our grows with autopots available in over 63 countries gravity powered autopot systems rely on no pumps no timers and no power to operate this plant driven automated watering is so precise it will reduce consumption of feed while increasing yield an effective and efficient way to delegate a little responsibility. Let your plants feed themselves. Use code CC10 at autopot-usa.com. If quality is the name of your game, look no further than AC Infinity. AC Infinity's grow tents, lights, accessories, and ventilation systems offer reliability and affordability along with total environmental control. Use code CULTIVATION on acinfinity.com to save even more. Frass Valley produces the highest quality superworm frass. Naturally strengthen your plants and enhance their resistance to pests and disease. Use code CC10 at frassvalley.com. We are big fans of Mass Hydroponics. Whether you're a local in Massachusetts or accessing their full online catalog, they are your one-stop shop for all of your growing needs. Use code CC10 at mass-hydro.com. What is going on, everybody out there in podcast land? Yo, yo. Hello, my darling. Hello. Howdy, everyone. How and the fuck are you? Look who's here. Great, and a special howdy to you, Mr. Outcast. Well, hi to all of you, too. Thanks so much for joining us. It's good to catch up. Yeah, Thank welcome you. back, dude. Welcome back. Yeah, it's been a while. In a minute. Yeah, when was the last one? I meant uh, to look that up today dude, and I forgot. Probably, probably about a year ago. Huh? Yeah, about I feel that like we, yeah, probably about a year. Something like that. Go in these like year cycles and bring people back. Because, you know, you don't have like that much new stuff going on like six months later. It's like really a year later, we can really like see what kind of new stuff you've been getting up to and all that, you know? So, yeah, I feel like I it's good, good timing. I think it's perfect. For sure. For sure. Um, you got anything uh, special to smoke on this evening? Uh, in my lineup right now is probably Raspberry Stomp. Ooh, 
Yeah, that that's what you're puffing on tonight? Yeah. What can you tell us about her? Delicious. Yeah, you can say it's delicious. Get you lit. <laughs> Maybe too much of an evening smoke. <laughs> Very indica, broadleaf yeah. leaning. I would say that. Definitely. Well, so it's it's funny, man. I I have to say the Stomper series, right? Like which I'm smoking a little pineapple stomper right now. Okay. Your stomper series. I joke around with the people I share it with. I'm like, yeah, you know, pineapple, but this, this will stomp your ass into the dirt. You know, like this, this is a, a little couch locky. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I think all of them along that whole line was pretty couch locky. I didn't have any that were more hybrid leaf. I would say. Well, it, it's a great nighttime smoke. Like, you know, I, I like this from like afternoon and later. You would think because it's called pineapple, it might be a good daytime, but unless you plan on getting jack shit done that day, well, that's wouldn't an excellent recommend. Nighttime smoke for that, right? There you go. Would not recommend for daytime use, but, but yeah, cheers. So, like, what do the stompers share in common? Like what kind of lineage? Um, the lineage TK, TK stomper, which I didn't release it. It's TK OG and a form stomper cross mix. Developed TK stomper, went a few lines down with it. Really like the smoke it developed. So, and some of the frost too, right? So some of those lineage out of that stomper surprised the hell out of me. But, uh, just about every fruit lineup you can think of. I even had some that I didn't release. You know, there was a passion fruit. There was a few others. They just didn't make the cut. But uh, the five that you have is the blueberry, the uh, purple chem. I'm going to sit here and forget all my damn old strains. Raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> it was orange, right? Apple. Yeah, an orange stopper. There you go. Hell, you know them better than I uh, that's fucking classic. Well, they all stomp. They all will stomp your ass into the ground if you're not careful with them. That's that's. Man, it's I a shame say. the passion fruit didn't make it through. I mean, I know that you have super high standards, and they didn't make it for a reason. But that sounds amazing. <laughs> well, I wish I could get the turps or something to come through on that, but it just didn't. It's dead. Yeah, that's a project in the water. Oh well. You can never meant to float. We get your standards, though, sir. You know what? We appreciate your standards. Oh, I appreciate y'all. Well, I mean, the standards can't be that high. He's on this show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What do you got tonight, Monsta? Smoking on some Preglu. Hell yeah. Yep. Mass Medical. One of my Narrow faves. I keep leader. it around. Matter of fact, right to my left of me, I have the mom that's still in a solo cup. It needs to be transplanted. <laughs> It's oh, uh, <laughs> rather big. How, old, how long has that been in a solo cup? I don't know. At least four or five months. I mean, look at the look at the <laughs> look at the <laughs> stock. Stem look how is thick super the... thick. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. It doesn't look that unhappy, man. It's just no. It's not. I mean, you just got to water like eighteen times a day. Um, <laughs> make sure that she has what she wants, but um, definitely root pound and abuse. But um, I feel so bad for her. She'll go into a, like a, the... a five gallon pot tomorrow i've been meaning to do it i've been fucking nice. super busy and then uh yeah. things reminds me of those poor women with like the foot bindings <laughs> <laughs> well, like a, i'd say that's more like a like a, a bonsai tree you know what I yeah mean? Like that's, yeah like in a, again like a kind of a is there something like an Asian custom that I'm missing out on that like involves binding things against their will? I don't know. Maybe uh, something with some meat hooks or something. <laughs> yeah. It's just odd, an odd cultural tradition. That's all. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, G3, what about you? What, what are you smoking? Oh, I actually am tonight. Hooray. Tolerance oh, she's break back. is she's over. Back. The bitch is back. So oh, yeah. yeah, those three weeks were absolutely worth it. That first hit knocked me on my fucking ass. And now I have like a little bitty baby tolerance. It's like one hit and I'm like, fuck, I'm stoned. <laughs> date now. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. But look, I have this beautiful thing. 
Uh, oh yeah, your Puffco. My Puffco. I got the Peak Pro. She's so pretty. She's got all of these like super fun party lights and stuff. I got a controller through my phone. It's like too much work that way. <laughs> How do you like, like it? I love it. I really. I mean, I kind of wanted to love it because it was expensive, but I kind of also didn't want to love it because there's a lot of fucking hype around this thing. And I was like, I don't know. We'll see. I yeah. love it. Yeah. It's amazing. I want to wash and press everything now. Is there anything and, that you don't like about it? Um, I haven't figured out, like, this is a me problem, not an it problem. I have ADHD and I can't, like get into the guts of something unless I'm really interested in it. And this thing is like, okay, I figured it out how to use it with my phone, but I haven't figured out all the manual bits yet. And you, I just you've only don't had know. it a couple of weeks and it's already you're already given it. It's not you, it's me line. <laughs> no. No, this is this is lovely. I'm just fucking with you, G3. This is lovely. So um I'm a big fan. I wasn't like my experience with extracts before this was like a nectar collector. So this is a it's a big upgrade. A little bit of an upgrade. Uh, it's so, a completely different experience. So it's you, you so s- nice and clean. Have you been pressing your own stuff now? No. I mean, I want to now. I have, oh, you like, got to get a little press now. Well, I have That's... one. I'm just not good at it. But mine is only two tons. And it doesn't have like a gauge or anything like that. I have well, to like that, hang that's... off of it to get it to lock. So there, is there's going to be a little bit of a manual one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the okay. like right. little Raz attack ones. Oh, ah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, hey, if we I got to figure get, out all of that, I was like, I, I love flower. I'm if, such a flower. If girl. I could get like, my sister's hair straightener to produce rosin back in the day, you could certainly get your two ton rosin tech to make something for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what all your sister produces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I have to say, my bad. Hey, hey now. Hey, now. Yeah, now uh, I feel like there's going to be more dopamine associated with the processing part of it because before, once the flower was dead, I just couldn't care enough anymore. Now I kind of care. Word. So, you don't care more about the cure. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the cure. I, I, uh... I need to care about all of it, <laughs> not just when the plant's alive. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but all the problem oh, problem. personal problem. Oh, all that yeah. post processing. Mm hmm. It's, yeah, it's an art. A, it, it truly it, is an it art. It truly is. And it takes time and there is a serious learning curve. And yeah, to do it, it is. right is beautiful. Yeah, to do my, it wrong is, you know, you, you hat, know, real fast that you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I haven't touched my press in over a year. Anyone it's so much work, extra awesome. work on top of trying to grow. Like you, when you, you get it, you're like, ah, it's going to be easy. I'm just going to do this. And yeah, like, uh, I mean, yeah, I, that's what I just, thought. And, I had to start giving shit away to people to make edibles because I had two chest freezers full of fucking <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Just trim like, and like larf and stuff. Y- yeah, or fresh frozen yeah. stuff. I I wanted to make fresh frozen with. Um, just yeah. It just it, you forget it's in the freezer. You just I don't know. I mean I don't know. Other people may be different. I just really don't have the time. You know, unless I want to get divorced. You know, <laughs> it's just. The reality of it, you gotta, you got other responsibilities. You just don't quite have the time, you know. Yeah, all the things I'd do if I had fifty hours a day, you know. Seriously, shit! Look at that thing light up, G three. Like something oh, out of she, Avatar. She looks it's so like happy. The, f- <laughs> the fucking blue people. So would you should see. Smoke hold on, an Avatar. After the this I, is done, I'll show you the the mood light. Cool. <laughs> the audio over uh people are getting cheated <laughs> yeah you gotta watch live sometimes well <laughs> let's let's get back to outcast man <clears throat> i want to talk about your recent drop dude no worries all so your you most to- most recent yeah. stuff like because we know about the stompers, you know? We know the stompers yeah. will stomp you into the dirt. And these are feminized auto flowers, right? This is what it's our, what you do best and pretty much all. All you do is fem autos, correct? I work on, well, I've got photos I'm working on, but there's nothing released yet. I mean, it's, I've gotcha. been working on photos for a while. It's just in the background. You guys don't see it. I'll throw some testers out to some friends every now and then. I'll send a few out. 
Uh, it's just a continuous work in progress. I just haven't got anything to the point to where I'm like, hey, that's that's what it needs to be, and then be able to send it out, right? So if you're going to put your name on something, you got to make sure it's going to be something of quality. Otherwise, why are you doing it? You'll spend three or four years on a project. You'll spend 20 years on a project if it's the right project. It's the truth. You know, anything worth doing, we're worth spending time on for sure. Doing right. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the, you, you came out with, I don't know how many new strains. It was at least half a dozen, right? Yeah, I think there were five and then one off. Um, so it was all the Raspberry Reaper line. Um, I say Raspberry Reaper. It wasn't the Raspberry Reaper line. It was Raspberry Stomper line. My, my bad. <laughs> uh, one of them was a collab with B BGG, and it was uh, Reaper's Raspberry. Who? So, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that guy? Yeah, that guy. Surprise. <laughs> and that was called uh, Re Reaper's Raspberry. Yes, sir. Reaper's Raspberry. So it's his funeral desserts crossed with our Raspberry Stomper. Okay, cool, cool. So love the effect of the funeral desserts. Hit BGG up, say, hey, man. Gotcha. That's where the I've Reaper comes from. I'm getting it now. Yeah, that's the Reaper. Funeral, funeral yeah, funeral. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's like that's so. All right. I'm, I, I just like, I like to see how, like, the breeder mind works when naming the strains. Oh, you know? naming conventions? Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole art in itself. Um, oh, anyway, cool. so I've got the Ras Reaper's Raspberry. That was the, the BGG collab. And then, you know. There are further other crosses of, of Raspberry Stomper throughout there. We had a V2 we created, so we got a Raspberry Reapers V2 version number two. Love the first one so much that we carried on lineage in this group, but also back crossed it to try to get a version two out of it and try to, you know, lock in some of the, I like the Frosty. I love the look of the plant because, I mean, it's probably the Frostiest auto I've grown as far as Raspberry Stomper. Uh, love that plant, so went forward with it, flavor everything carried on the lineage and see what it done with the, some other friends of ours. Right. So we brought that whole different gene pool in there and mixed it up, come out with a few that ended up feeling like we needed to release them. So. Mm. All right. But so, it, and that one is your Reaper's raspberry. Yeah. That one is the Reaper's raspberry. The other ones, uh, there's one called burnt peanuts. There's mythical midnight. And then there's, hell, you can, you're going to make a liar out of me sitting here. <laughs> yeah, I can bring them up. On. And so we, 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 if we want to go, like, let's say we wanted to, like, check some of your, your stuff out. What 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 website is it? DCD, if I'm recalling correctly? Uh, DCD, yeah, DCD is the seed bank that I deal with. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt and that group out there, they're good people. All right, cool. um, you can so, go there and check that out. I've also got a link on my Instagram. I want to hear about Bert real quick Peanut more. That sounds like <laughs> a really fascinating profile. <laughs> no, it's not really about the profile. Yeah, it's right. I name. love the I go. love the name. Like that appeals to me a lot. Like burnt umami flavor. Yes, please. <laughs> like leaving a, a hot dog on a grill for too long. Yeah, I can't really say that the tarps are burnt on this one. I, I mean, this one goes back a ways to whenever I was back in high school. So this is a note to an old friend of mine. Um, he's gone now, but me and him used to go out at lunch, man. Every, every day, you know, we were gone at lunch period. And right after lunch, I had a math class. And um, me and this buddy of mine, we'd go out and at lunch, we'd get toasted up and then we'd come back to school. And this girl, it's like the cheerleading captain, she sat in front of us. And she turned around to me one day and she just looked at me and goes, Hey, where do you guys go eat for lunch? I said, well, just down here at the quick stop. We just go down here. She goes, y'all eat the same thing every day? And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, y'all come in this classroom smelling like burnt peanuts every day. After <laughs> <laughs> That's where the name came from. Burnt peanuts. Is that what, what she associated the smell of weed yeah. with? Yeah. yeah. All right, got gotcha. you. He's real gotcha, naive. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. He called her burnt peanuts. That's like, funny, man. I could see, I could see, like, I could see that that association in someone's mind. Yeah, it's funny. Badger's speaking extremely high of it. So, yeah, yeah. Badger had a huge, humongous plant, man. Whenever he was testing some of it out, he he grew a monster. Yeah, says the wow. beast that wants Ooh. to dump trikes. 
Ooh. She's a dumper. What up, Badger? So if she doesn't taste like burnt peanuts, what does she taste like? So this one is an offshoot of Ripley's OG and crossed with that raspberry stomper. So what we took from the Ripley's OG was really the structure of the plant. I bet you those things and get this- huge. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves their didn't we, yeah, that. Yeah, didn't we say that on like a episode a couple weeks back? Like that Ripley's OG. You and find so that, as a breeder that that gives like such good such structure good to structure. A, a cross, right? And she yeah, gives the structure tall. to her children like often. Amazing. Yeah, you, yeah, carry the traits down, but you know you combine that with it's funny, interesting. Tri- the trike monster of raspberry stomper, and. Uh, that's what we end up with is a giant raspberry stomper that we was breeding, hopefully to be able to wash uh, and look at the returns on it. And kind of that's, that's where we're, we was looking that direction. And, you know, that's why Badger actually tested it out. Nice. Want to see what the wash return is on it and look at it. But I mean, it hasn't been washed. We went ahead and turned it loose. It's a giant, it's a giant plant. Wow. Giant frost. Wow. Uh. I, I believe that, man. You know, everything I've grown of yours has been uh, sturdy, let's just yes. say. Beautiful so, structure. The Saker Watch were, were fucking beasts, the ones I grew. Yeah. And the, the TKOG was on the smaller side, but uh, also a pretty good sized fucking plant. So it's, it's funny. Like the pineapple stomper I did recently, which I'd love to bring up. I don't know if I have any pictures smaller, of what I could do recently. Say again? What, you're smaller, Captain? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's what I was going to say is it wasn't the biggest plant. However, like, yielded a shit ton, dude. I'm like, you know, plant that was maybe two and a half feet tall. Like a little, what I would call like a stubby little girl, you know? She wasn't up there with the, the rest of the canopy. It didn't fucking matter. She ate that light and gave me fat nugs, you know, just all over the whole thing like side branches tops it doesn't matter they're just solid and uh like yeah i would guess that this nug right here is about like four four and a half grams you know yeah she looks it dense yeah dense breaks up nice too it's always a organic way Hey, do you think that that has something to do with like, you know, the way your body man, I mean, comes out? My personal growth style, I'll tell you, is is synganics. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. I'm a. That's just the way I grow. It's you know, everybody has to find their own way and their own success in life. As far as whenever you grow these plants, on which direction you're going to go, whether it's whether it's grown organically, synganically, or just straight salts. I mean, I've got people that grow that stuff you know, hydroponically, you know, uh, my, my son messed with, you know, the uh, buckets for a while, grew some monsters. It's just that however you find your style and, and what grows the best for you. And, you know, monsters, a synganic guy, you being an organic person, I don't know what G3 grows. What do you grow G3? I'm organics. All organics? Pretty much. I mean, not like organics or die. I'll certainly <laughs> use some things that blur the line a little bit, but I generally go yeah, organic. Like yeah. I'm adding Terps Plus and stuff like yeah. that. You know, just Yeah, but dude, that stuff's like enhancers. two drops to a five-gallon bucket. I mean, it's like fucking such, such a little amount of that stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I would say, you know, I'm like 99% organic. Or organic. Sprinkling some bone mill on there and washing it down with a good dose of you know gen- cow mag hydroponics <laughs> yeah, gh3 part dude actually that's a, you know it's not not a bad way to grow at all man I that's mean, how i started and i grew a, beautiful plants a lot of pros trio that. gh3 yeah. part gets shit on a lot it now it did change a little bit a while back but i've i know people that still use it and because it's easy and you know it they like it. Super and easy. it it's yeah. cheap you can buy like the gallon jugs i think for like 50 bucks a piece or something i mean it'd be be off and growing that's Listen, it best the best weed you ever smoked was probably grown with gh3 part under hps lights kicking it old school yep yeah we're back a little bit <laughs> maybe there was something to it you know oh, there had to be 
I don't know. You know, maybe a lot of people are very nostalgic about the weed that we used to get back in the day. Like for whatever reason, whether it's like the high that we I think it's all like set is, and setting is missing. Most of I think it, it's I just a, you know trick your mind plays about. I think it is a little bit of everything. A little I bit mean, of set and setting. I think. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. You had some outliers that were fire, but generally speaking, like the shit we get and uh, grown out, it's all fucking high grade, man. It is. Some of it almost too high grade. Like if if the THC is too too high, it gives me a headache. When I say high grade, that's not even what I refer to. It's just like good smoke. Fucking. Hybrids of yeah. hybrids of hybrids. And- but I mean, overall, <laughs> ideally, you want something that is will get you high. So you want it to be super psychoactive. You also want the flavor and the aroma. So you want those terps to be really high. So you want high grade across the board. So if you don't have that, I feel like if you don't have the terps to balance it out, if you just have straight THC and you strip everything else away, it's just, uh, it just gives me a headache. Yeah, it's the same thing like smoking distillate. Like, when I see people yeah. smoking those fucking distillate pens, I want to smack it out of their <laughs> fucking hands. Oh, like, gosh. Like, a little like, bit of well, education. Well, you know, people are like, oh, it's cheap, you know? Like, I, they're at, you know, two for 20 at the fucking dispo. Like, yeah, like, there's a reason for that, you know? That shit's made with hemp. I can't believe that it's good for you. They literally are making it with... Most of the distillate is made with hemp these days. They have to extract retarded amounts of it to get enough THC for for fucking people. People, you know, still buy it. We got Badger chiming in again. He says, I had plants that made me slightly hallucinate. That I haven't found in today's smoke. I, I, I well, agree, man, you know, I had that. that too, that's a lot of accidentally cut with PCP. So <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> it maybe that actually happened. Just, someone sprayed it with formaldehyde by accident. Yeah, yeah it was like I think it, that my dad was like, "Oh yeah, a little bit of angel dust." And like, <laughs> that's a lot of like you're talking like land racy shit, like uh, more definitely sativa based stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know, there but, definitely is less and less people working with. Uh, the narrow leaf variety you just you're not seeing a lot of it anymore no because uh, it, it takes yeah, longer we, you get 16 week flower times you're definitely not going to work with it too much right yeah 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 you got to bring that down if you want it to be economical at all but you know, what if we I, get I, like I wonder, super I just amazing killer bud but it takes 16 weeks to get there i mean some people would say it's worth it i would say it was not at all you know it it like depends on your your perspective i i think Mm. as a personal grower definitely be worth it to at least experiment uh, or kind of see how that is at least once right like uh mike from mass hydro grew out some a recreation of some acapulco gold that was like a 24 week flowering time i I remember Um, seeing that on ig dude it was insane and I got a chance to smoke some of it. It was fucking awesome. It was really good, bud. Um, but yeah, I don't think I, I mean, I, I would have the patience for something quite that long. I mean, you're talking half a fucking year, basically. Um, <laughs> is it something even have, like a know, super silver haze is like a 12 weeker, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah there, there are some hot, there are some people growing cuts of supposedly stuff that will get you there in like 11, 12 weeks. Well, I wonder, like I truly do, because again, like I'm one of those people who I wax nostalgic a little bit about the bud that we used to get back in the day. I want, I wonder, like, was it the genetics and it's just been bottlenecked and hybridized to the point where like we lost a little bit of something along the way. Or if it was just like growing techniques of back in the day, you know, we've been hearing a lot about like light spectrums affecting the genotype and phenotype of plants. And I, I don't wonder know, part about of the nutrients about having... that too, you know, like it back in the day, it was a lot harder to get seeds. Um, a lot of people were still continuing to grow these things, even like 16 to 20 week plants. There must have been something in them. There's a reason that they existed. So breeding down to like a super short 
breeding time is great for a lot of reasons, but it also like what genetics are we losing? What are we giving up in the process? A lot for sure. Oh, yeah. I hope people I'm- keep those alive, you know? So I appreciate like you're, you generally breed autos and you're breaching into photos and making sure that those are correct. So, yeah. you know, breeders that kind of have those multifaceted things and can even ones who specialize in the more rare genetics, I think that's really important overall for the health of the plant as a whole, not in yeah. plants, but marijuana as a whole. <laughs> <Agreed>. <laughs> You don't call so it do marijuana, know, uh, G3. It's cannabis. Come on. Cannabis. Do y'all know uh, Arasnig on uh, Instagram? Yes, the yeah. land race. Uh, mm-hmm. he is. Yeah, he's he's conserving a lot of good genetics. He's uh, So I pick up a bunch of his stuff. You know, I, I mean, I try to go back to that lineage, too. I mean, I, you know, somebody's got to drive something backwards. And so yeah. Tap he's in got every once in a while. He does drops. Uh have you heard of Tonglin Sun Pro- Project? I have not, no. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. Okay, that's a project they got online that, you know, it also is a, affiliated with saving animals and things. And he done a, don't, you know, basically a charity drop here a while back, and they dropped a bunch of land race beans. And these are ones that they brought back from Afghanistan. They've got the, um, I hate this to be in a commercial form, but it's, the shit's too, too cool to not be. Uh, Double Dalai, which is a, uh, it's a straight up black purple plant. Ooh. They, mm. Yeah, it's insane looking. It's like got navy blue buds when they're dried. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's I'm cool. immediately very interested. Navy blue. I, hey, that, that would pique my interest for sure. And so they've got that. They've got the, uh, what else was the super deluxe, which is a cross of a bunch of land races. They've got there locally over, they're all wide broadleaf. Because all of it comes from over in Afghanistan, but they also cross it with uh, some Colombians and some Equatorial strains too. So they're bringing kind of the best best of both worlds. These guys doing this, you know, kind of heritage project. So when if you see them, man, I always try to snatch some up when I can because you don't come across that type of stuff. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure, man. It was like really back in like the early mid '80s, I think, when people started to like have access to a, a bunch of these land races around the world, right? It was like Neville, Sch- Neville Schumacher, uh, yeah. all these guys from like Amsterdam and uh, Europe pri- primarily. And they would collect a, a bunch of land races, however they'd acquire them and then hybridize those together. And it was went at the point in like where they would have like a cross between a, a Colombian, um, you know, a Thai, and an Afghan that you're like, like, holy shit. Wow. This is really something special. Like this is like modern smoke. What we would think of it as, you know, took a, took a couple generations is what I'm saying. But if you can tap into those initial building blocks every once in a while, that's just super cool. Yeah. It's foundational in my, in my eyes. It is. I mean, you got to dial, dial it back to the foundation and then bring it back out. Right. So thinking of bringing something from way down the lineage, you know, 20, 30 generations down and bring it back to square one and starting all over with a cross. I mean, that, you know, that's, that's a lot of different varying genetics you're putting back into that pool with that land race. There's no telling what you're going to have. Might take a lot of work, but yeah, but I mean, what do we got time? <laughs> that's all, all we got, <laughs> man. That's all we got. So I want to get back to some of your stuff in particular, man. Some of your new stuff. We we talked about the burnt peanuts. Yes, sir. We, un- we understand the burnt peanuts. I also see you have a one called a jungle berry cookies. Yeah, I figure okay. monster throw me under the bus for the cookies breeding. <laughs> No, no, listen. I've said it before. The cookies is good. I just think it's overused. You know, like there's cookies in almost everything you you fucking see these days. Um, it's it's definitely bounced back a lot. Like because people, I think people are more aware of that. Um, but it was just one of those things that I think had a lot of hype, and some of it was deserved. But uh, I don't get into the whole. Like I love mass medical, but dude, he is. 
talk about somebody that rips cookies like he fucking rips that shit to no avail i i i, I don't i think that's a a bit too far for, and uh for, but yeah no no i've said it before like one of my favorite autos that i've ever grew was was forgotten cookies by meth um i had a unicorn that i tried to recreate i don't know a dozen times never ever got it again um it was amazing smoke so yeah no Man, i like cookies there's a and reason dude, people use it yeah and listen at the end of the day if you're putting your fucking name on it i'm sure it's going to be good i <laughs> appreciate that there you go so the jungleberry cookies that's a uh gorilla cookies so it's gorilla glue for with a magic cookies cross create gorilla cookies and then we nice. carry gorilla cookies down a little further really the gorilla cookies was mainly for structure gorilla Again, cookies is um is that's fast buds if i'm not mistaken right yes yes they've, right. Got, yeah. they've got gorilla cookies as well cool. and so Carrying it down, getting uniform structure out of the plant, and then breeding into it. So it's it's get, it's picking the right one, right? So you're talking about genotypes, and so we we get in there and we get the right one. And this that one did not produce. I wouldn't say a whole hell of a lot of seeds. I'm not going to have a whole lot of any of these strains. Too many of them. Uh, but the the gorilla cookies crossed with that raspberry. That raspberry brought the frost on. That's all I can tell you. It brought the frost nice. on in ways that that's why we labeled it a keeper. I mean, I've got that one, and then uh, Mythical Midnight. That one is a black mamba cross. So you revert back to the uh, that one. I think that one came from. I want to say Rockbud. All right, I'm I'm bringing it up here. Do you have a uh, yeah, yeah? Black Mamba was there. It doesn't show like the lineage or anything on on the DC. Lineage. Yeah. The, yeah, oh, the lineage itself. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it's on my uh, Instagram, and you just have to dial into the shop. It's on Big Cartel. Let me type it in real quick. Yeah, Mythical Midnight. So what, that's a rock bud plus a... Uh, yeah, that's a rock bud. The, the raspberry stomper. Out. Yes, sir. So the uh, Mythical Midnight, that one in particular... That one has the uh, magic cookies, I believe. No, it wasn't the magic cookies. Um, it's Bahama Mama crossed into, I believe, cookie. It, it's a cookies, I believe. It's what what created the black mamba? Mm. And, then, and then we we got the black mamba, grew out several of them, and then found one that was uh, particularly vigorous had growth bred her down and then went back into the offspring we went a few generations down so got it dialed in where it's a pretty large plant love the frost on it gotta love the frost on it so i, I can tell you're a frosty man <laughs> they don't have frost you, you know <laughs> That's one of the things you look for. I can. That's just, I'm. I'm I trying know. to I mean, trying to get like a sense of who you are as a breeder, what you look for, what you like, all that stuff. Yeah, all the structure and frost. I mean, the turps. Yeah, they're go. all. For me, they're always going to be there. It just depends on what kind of turps you like, right? So you're going to go Kim gas, or you're going to go fruity side. It's really kind of what you like, and then you can chase that if you want to. But I think the where does the turps come from, right? There are oils and everything else on the plant, but I also believe some of it's in the glandulars and, and inside of the of the the plant itself. I'm trying to sit here missing my words. Uh, you mean just the there we go. I think some of the you know some of the terp, some of the flavoring does it not come out of the trichomes? It's all based on the plant, yes. But I think some of it, you know, it can transfer over into the trichome. How do you think hash gets its taste and other things that age as time? So. Really, I think the turps are going to be there. That's just me personally. Turps are going to be there. We bred them into the plant. And they've carried on for generations. I look for frost, structure, and uh, really kind of overall bag appeal, man. I like a pretty plant. Don't we all? Dude, I Don't feel that. I it. feel that. No, <laughs> no, 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 we no. love you for it. Listen, that's. As a breeder, do you find it difficult to breed for? Turp profiles you wouldn't necessarily enjoy because other people might like. Do like you, me, 
like do you like yes like cat we know cat loves a, a good umami profile so <laughs> If are there tur profiles that you don't necessarily enjoy, but you know other people really would, and you want to get the best out of a plant in that? Like, do you find that hard to do, or do you do that at all? Maybe you just grow everything you like, which is something I would do as a breeder. Yeah, I, I tend to lean on things that I like, and I stick to them. Um, not to say that other people are out there aren't right, but you know, when I look at what I'm putting out, that's a profile of myself. It's something that I created that. Hey, this is what I like, and I'm wanting to share it with the world. And so, yeah, I feel that when it comes to meat turps and things of that nature, have I had them? Yeah, probably a few times, but it wasn't a road I chased down. You know, I, it goes back and forth. To me personally, it goes back and forth between fruit and gas. I mean, you're on one side, you might like fruit and have the sweetness one day. The other side, you like the the sting of the gas. You like something that's going to burn your nose. Well, that is exactly the combination. I, I have in this pineapple stomper, I will say, fruit and gas, <laughs> you know, like that's so like I love it. That's that that's your your preferred turp profile. Like you really can't go wrong with a fruit gas combo. I mean it's it's a classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crowd yeah. pleaser, yeah. Yeah, very much a crowd pleaser. Like you're never gonna open up a jar or something like that and be like, that doesn't smell good. And most people are going to agree with you. Like it smells great. Um, but yeah, no, it's like if, if it's not your cup of tea, why, why mess around with it? If I were a breeder, shit, I would just read the stuff I like too. You know? Yeah. I just, you definitely chase what you want. Chase For what sure, you like. Man. Even, you know, I've told guys on this on discord, I encourage everybody chunk pollen. You need to learn how to do it. You know, okay. get out there and create some seeds. I love you it. might have the next unicorn in there, man. It's, it's, you know, I compare genetics with just about any kind of form of biological breeding. It isn't always going to be, you've got Michael Jordan and Serena Williams lined up, you know, and you're going to create this fantastic athlete kid. A kid might have some special powers, but he also might be a special kid, right? So he might be somebody that needs to get taken care of and he just doesn't develop. So it's not guaranteed every time you're going to create some fire, but if you choke pollen, Learn the process, learn about selection, and do some work. I mean, you're you're not far from a breeder. And I think everybody needs to go down that road. It, it, it ain't everybody's cup of tea. I mean, I, I understand growing. I love growing. Um, probably love growing more than any other activity mm. that has to do with the plant. And that's being honest with you. I think to find it challenging, find it uh, – it's what drew me in. It sucked me in years and years ago, man. I mean – at first, the smoke sucks you in whenever you first try, but then learn you can grow this at the house, really? Yeah, right. You know, show me how, dude. <laughs> well, you know, and that's that's one of the reasons we love to talk to breeders is, like, you guys, it's, like, understood that, like, in order to breed, you must first have, like, a thorough understanding of how to grow the plant and how all the parts of it work together like it that take that in and of itself takes years and then to get into the breeding part it's like we we as growers all look up to the breeders because it's like we assume that you guys have like this insider knowledge of the plant and kind of like how it operates on a genetic level that i i think is i think it's a real thing you know i would say that yeah majority of people that's the case, right? So I really think like what you're talking about, you know, you're talking about being in, in the grow phase of it. I really think everybody's going to end up, you know, eventually you chase that tail, right? So you're, you're going to breed one of these days. You're not going to tell me captain's not going to chuck pollen. Cause I know it's down, it's down the road. He's coming up soon. Oh, it's coming. So, man. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's so coming. I think everybody needs to go down that, that Avenue. I mean, I, you know, I found a passion in it that I didn't have before that, you know, it just made me dig deeper into the plant. And so, yes, you do get an understanding, but I guess, you know, it's kind of a, it's a motivating passion for the plant, whatever you, you get it early on. It's like you get set on fire and you got to go chase this thing. Mm -hmm. So you chase it down that road, you go to growing the best plant you can grow out there in gorilla land, you know, out in the bush, uh, <laughs> you, grow, you grow the best thing you can grow. And, um, 
may do with that until you get a little older and you get, you know, established on your feet as an adult and you get your own tent setups and everything going and you're like, okay, we'll go down this road and you start traveling down that road. Once you get past all that and you grow the most beautiful plants, I think you're going to find yourself chasing, okay, I want to see how I can steer this thing and make something of my own. Mm -hmm. I think I think you get to that point. And that's just part of your journey in life. I think, you know, everybody's got breeder in them. I love that, dude. Everybody's got a little breeder in them. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> some, of, some of us are further than others down that road, but everybody's got it in them. Some of us have to drop out of the race. <laughs> <laughs> some of us just can't hack it. Like some, you some of you are going to shit your pants before you cross that finish line of the marathon. You know, like you, you just won't be able to, to hack it. Like we got Austin too. Like he chimed in. He says, sometimes you grow a rain man plant, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not, not every plant's going to be something special. You want to, <laughs> you want to go forward with, you know, sometimes you gotta, you, you gotta grow the rain men at, at times. Well, you see them in today's genetics too. They're, they're, I would say no breeder out there does not have a plant that they haven't had sprout from seed that's mutated. I mean, those, those are part of the, the, the industry I've, I've seen. We've, we've probably hybrided this plant so much that and bred it down. That's where I think that you start seeing the three leaf cotyledons and three, you know, just the odd looking leaves and the weird looking stuff coming out of this little seedling. I think that's where we start running into the wall with the genetics per se. That's, that's my take on it. I think the more you see that, the more struggling it is. And I think that, you know, you're pretty much either somebody's pissed in the gene pool and the gene pool's no longer good. <laughs> we got to go back to the start. <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to save it somewhere. Yeah, very interesting, man. I, you know, love the perspective. So part of being a breeder is kind of having that eye for, especially with autoflower breeding, this is such a skill. I don't know how you guys do this. It's going to be just experience, but having that eye to know what a plant is kind of going to turn out to be when they're young. Have you ever had a plant like completely go sideways on you and give you something that you totally didn't expect? Oh, and I would tell you this, I've had an ass ton of them do that. And I don't, I mean, whenever I say an ass ton, I'm talking a bunch. They, as you're growing these things, I will not grow or breed anything that I have not grown probably five to 10 times in the past. I've got to get the traits of that plant down. I've got to understand what that plant's going to do and got to make sure that it's going to be something we want to carry forward and look at, right? So in the selection process, once you've grown enough of them, you can start deducing, seeing some of the traits. So say you grow the first run, you grow six of them and, you know, three of them look like stars and three of them aren't. Well, you got to pay attention and it's dubious notes. That's all I can tell you. It's dubious notes, notebooks full of stuff that we've, that I have laid eyes on and witnessed through the growing process. And then uh, once you kind of find what you want, you mass plant a shit ton of them. Probably I go from anywhere from 45 to 70 of them in seedling cups to, yeah, wow. to get started. And then you start culling from that, <clears throat> culling from there, you start culling down. I mean, you can do that type of selection in not a very big area because they're all solo cups. It's just a pain in the ass once they get in the seedling size to start watering them, right? And I don't like them getting very big before I transfer them because they won't get any size, especially if you're going to breed with it. You've got to, it's just like growing. I mean, that's part of the growing process. You got to make sure you transplant at the right, right time frame. If you transplant it all, I know there's people out there that don't practice the method, but I, I've always done that. And it helps me get the, the hunt down, done a little in a little more economic space. Now, how, how many, if you, if you start with like, let's say you said 45 to like 70 yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Whoa. And little solo cups. That's like, that's a shit ton, right? Like then you gotta, you gotta be like, you gotta be a, a baby plant killer to be a breeder. Especially an auto breeder. Because it's like, how do you wean this down? And how many plants do you carry forward and then transplant from those solo cups? Oh, my gosh. I want to hear this so badly. Yes. But that depends. That that really depends on the strain and what you're looking for. 
I mean, whenever you get down to the bare brass tacks of it, you may not have a seed run that's very viable or very large. I mean, if you only find, say you plant 75 plants and you get it cold down and you're down to like five and you're like, man, these look great. You start to see them pre-flower. You've already got your other male over here on the other side going in a different area. But once you see it and maybe the structure gets wonky at the top or maybe it just does something odd, like start throwing three leaves or something weird, and you end up calling it last minute, you've got a single plant you're dealing with. Single plant mama, that's who's getting bred. And like I said, you're going to really want to carry the lineage down to lock in what you just lock, what you just bred into it to get the Gen 1s. You want to carry it down a few more generations before you look at releasing anything. I mean, I will release F2 as you get an F2 version. You're starting to look at grandparents. You know, you're seeing a little bit of the lineage. F3 kind of lock in the traits a little bit more. And F4, you really kind of should have them locked in pretty good by that point. So to get back to G3's question, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it does take a trained eye. But you have to watch them closely with diligent notes. I mean, and it gets to that point where either you're going to cull it. You got if you have two or three if you, of this strain, the what you selected is something that's a common trait in this strain, right? So maybe it's the structure, maybe it's the uh, frostiness of the ones you've grown out before, so you can see the frosty, right? I would that's love to see you like your your notebook, man. It's just like like plant number thirty two. Its leaves did not. Like go a, above a 30 degree angle today. Plant looks a little unhappy going to pour vinegar in it and kill it, you know, in its sleep. Like I, you know, I, how, how, and what's your, what's your preferred method of disposing of these little, little, little seedlings then, or, or are they usually about like, uh, maybe 20 days old or so before you, yeah, they're not very big. I mean, hey, listen to him. he's getting big. horny, dude. Yeah. Tell them. <laughs> I want to hear about your, your snuff methods, please. Oh my gosh. My, mine's not that great. I mean, I just pop the cup loose, pull them out by the roof, <laughs> throw them in the track, and dump the soil. Yeah. Oh, I, can, I can hear the baby play. So you kill them and throw them in a dump. Oh my God, cap. Yeah. I throw, yeah. Them, I throw them in the uh, compost bin. But we'll just say yeah. dumpster because that sounds better. Uh, so, compost. Uh, compost your baby plants. Yeah, they compost. <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah. an adult. You know, I'm it, sorry. You got it. It's like part of the whole deal. G3, it's like if you want to be a breeder, you I better know. get used to killing baby plants. Yeah, I mean, you got to kill them. You <laughs> might as well say it. Everyone's it. got a little everyone's got a little baby plant murderer in them. No, I'm oh, like yeah. I'm like baby plant sanctuary. <laughs> Oh, when you're dealing with as many seeds and seedlings and stuff is what we're when we throw down and plant, you know, that's a shit ton of seeds. I know that's, that's a shit ton of seeds. Too. And if you're only gonna carry like one yeah. forward, it's like I can only imagine. You're just like you have to be so selective and like any one thing will just like piss you off about that plant. You're like dead. Seedling. Do you it. go from like fifty plus down to less than ten? Yeah, like it's less a matter of, of a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's in short time frame. So I wow. By the time I'm doing the last of my culling, my personal is right whenever they're getting up in the pre-flower, and you can start seeing the stretch, and I'm done. By then, you better have your plant selected. Oh my gosh, you have to be almost prophetic. Not That's prophetic. I mean, <laughs> if you've grown this strain out or whatever cultivar you're using, and I say that with quotes whatever strain you're using whatever strain you grow out as long as you've grown it multiple multiple times and you know that what you're chasing and you paint that picture for yourself and you've got notes on it it's easy to pick it out you've, you've seen it time and time again right i mean you know what you're looking for yeah very true i guess the idea of growing the same plant that many times is just and so daunting to me is this with this that again that's the that's the, the game these breeders play. It's it's I such know, a such you know, dedication. That's you know. so much dedication to the art. Like, oh my gosh, you just so have so much admiration for good breeders. Mm -hmm. That's why we talk to these people. That's why. <laughs> that's why we, we want to bring them on the show because it's like I, it takes a special kind of grower. It really does to to be a breeder. I mean, I think. Everyone might have a little pollen chucker in them, and from my perspective, but like to be a breeder, 
It takes dedication, attention to detail, and all these things we talk about. And I don't know if everyone's got that. I truly don't. There are a lot of people that think they do, and they definitely don't. Everybody's got the so, capability. The ones, that, the ones that do it right deserve, like, the admiration. And that's, that's, again, like, Absolutely. why we love talking to folks like you, sir. And that other guy, BGG. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like the little brother of the trio. <laughs> hey, man, we, we got a lot of, you know, good, really good auto flower breeders, like, kind of friends of the show, I would say. And, like, yeah. again, I love that you guys, like, work together outside of the show to like make some fucking great new auto flowers for the community that's that's awesome um yeah i want to talk about the one now in your new selection that intrigued me the most okay and can you guess what that one is knowing i like those umami terps and the the kind of unquantifiable stank He doesn't even know his own uh, strains. He didn't. He's like, wait, wait, did I breed something like it's strawberry GMO, (laughs) sir? Oh, okay, yeah. So that that that's not part of the raspberry. Oh well, fuck me. All right. Well, what is that all about? That's its own entity. So that was. um, See all these strains. I got stories. Sorry, man. That's just no worries. No, no, I I confused you. I confused you. I just put that again. Looking at your selection, I was like, "Ooh, that one sounds interesting." Yeah. So, growing several GMO autos was that journey. That was a butt ton of GMO autos. We grew. Found the, you know, after several times of growing it, you find, and I'm, I'm telling you the the whole garlic mushroom onion profile, right? So that one, it it reeked of garlic. It smelled mm-hmm. like garlic. I mean, it that that had the terps. Um, then we crossed that up with our strawberry OG, which was not a release either. That Ooh, was uh, yeah. <laughs> so stra- TK OG crossed with uh, strawberry. I will say it was strawberry cough, strawberry syrup. Well, Can't remember shit, which man, one. I, I this one sounds, but, sounds that was super a, special. So that was a TKOG with the strawberry, and we brought that over here and crossed it with the GMO. So the GMO, like you said, the one we selected, I wanted all of it as far as the the terps. I mean, that was the chaser. That was the smell of the plant. That's what drove me on that plant. Was, good Lord, this plant, the smell of it. Uh-huh. Um, I couldn't – I don't know how to describe it. But chase that one down, right, planted multiple of them till we got them up so high they looked good. Figured the terps, you roll. That's part of the rolling the dice, right? So you got to roll the dice on that one when it's that young. You can do a stem rub or whatever, but I really don't believe you get the full profile. Uh, anyway, it's it, to me, it's a roll of the dice. Roll it. You cross it up with the strong strawberry OG that we had, which I grew several of them on my own. I just hadn't got it to where I needed to be at. It's kind of a backdoor project, but used it in this cross, and this one was fire. And mm. uh, Bred it down a couple generations. I think uh, the F2s and F3s we gave out as freebies for a while. And I had some people email me about it. Say, hey, man, you got any more of these freebies? Nice. <laughs> That's the ones I want. That's your regular strains. <laughs> so started, maybe we got something. So you go oh, back to the drawing sure. board with it, right? And you breed it down another generation and lock in what you really think you ought to lock in. And uh, we gave them away for freebies for a while and then decided we'd do a release with it. Mm, nice first man. one's well, free sucker <laughs> now you gotta buy a pack but, sorry hey man <laughs> no you, your prices are fair hey you, you you know you get it's like 10 bucks a bean feminized auto flowers no, so in our packs what you get whenever you buy something from us is uh you know you're buying it for me directly on the breeder the bean pack is they're they're and that's even through the CD. The bean packs usually have eight or, eight or nine beans in them. It's almost double what you what it says on oh, there. Word. Uh, we get that get plenty out, of beans. outcast math. Yeah, and I, you know, it isn't that we're just throwing in a bunch of free beans. It's just that you know I want every grower that's out there to have a positive experience with it. Period. Bar none. End of story. If you had trouble germinating, I had a guy hit me up in Discord. He got a pack of, of a three pack. 
and he couldn't get any on the pop. So I sent him a full brand new pack. I mean, this it's not a big deal. Just reach out. I stand behind it. If you tell me it's not doing what you think it should be doing, if it doesn't germinate, hit me up. I'll get them. I get get, get you. Yeah, but I mean, if somebody can't get a whole pack to germinate, they got to be doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah, out to that fucking knucklehead. Hope he's uh, listening. I'm not, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. No, man. you don't have to. I will for you. Shout out to this. <laughs> shout out to this knucklehead that couldn't get one fucking bean to pop. Either that or he's fucking a scam artist. One or two scenarios, I don't like them either way. <laughs> You're either the worst grower ev- ever or a liar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, One man, or two. Uh, that's all right. Uh, right Outcast does not I'm endorse or condone this statement, um, <laughs> but I do. Neither do we. <laughs> oh. He's killing me. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, shit. I mean, if anybody has any problems with them, they, they hit us back up. But yeah, eight or nine packs or eight or nine beans to the pack. Uh, you also get a pack of freebies thrown in there. Some of the freebies that we got going right now are a lot of the older, older strains. Um, back to the original OG ones, you know, there's some Sacred Watch in there, some Lucky Punch, some TKOG. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of that stuff's coming out in the freebie packs. We just giving it out and clearing out seed, seed space. So nice, that's what you get. You order one pack, you get about probably 12, 13 beans. Wow. And then some stickers. You gotta love the, the little guys, you know? They yeah, always you, hook it up. It's like you speaking of your stickers, I'm glad you mentioned that. You seem to put a lot of thought into your artwork, like a lot of uh, yeah. you know, the other breeders we feature on on the show. Tell us a little bit about that, like how you go about creating that, really. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, modern um how do I put this? Modern ingenuity and the use of fiber. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I ended up linking up with a um an artist that's on uh, actually, that's great, dude. Yeah. I'm hunting it down and trying to figure out what I wanted to create. And so I, you know, I employed a few of them. And that to me is way cheaper than hey man, send me six hundred dollars, I'll create your logo on Insta. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I create yeah, your I'll dope sure, logo. Man. For sure. So yeah, they're held to a different <laughs> standard, right? So I mean, <laughs> it ain't like I'm going to chase them down to get my twenty five or thirty bucks back for using them the first time, but that's on me. But anyway, I ended up hunting a few few artists down and uh, ended up with one I liked his art style, and I've used them ever since. And um, that's cool. They're overseas. They, you know, working back and forth. It's a matter of email, and it, it happens fairly quickly. Tell them what I want created. Kind of give them an idea. They spit out what they want at me. I take a look at it. If I got to revise something, I tell them we get it revised, and uh, I just like the art style. Um, yeah, the style carries over. over, like all, yeah, all your gear. Yeah. yeah, all the gear. Man, yeah, like you doing consistent today? branding. You brand. Yeah, you got to be branded yeah. if you're doing anything today. You don't have a brand, you're not doing anything, and you got to have a brand that people can see and and know who that is. All right, all right. So speak. Speaking of which. You know, maybe like show your. Uh, I wish I had one of your stickers oh, laying handy, but like show oh, us oh, that logo you got on your shirt, and like what is what is his name, sir? Oh, it's Blurred Elf. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a name for it. Maybe we have a. Uh, we yeah, do something bring to, this up. along the lines of, of, of name the skeleton. Hell, we can do a contest. yeah. We gotta have like we gotta like know who this this skeleton uh, pirate. Uh, cowboy is. I feel like we yeah, need we need like a backstory and a a little bit of lore on this this character here. So the character <laughs> itself was just a creation that I really liked, and I liked the skeleton cowboy. Um, that just goes back to a bunch of you know. I'm from Texas. Uh, we're in the prohibition land of the U.S. And yes, sir. You know, I think about. When I think of Texas, whenever you know, I didn't always live in the state, but whenever I did, you know, I was away. And you try to get a picture in your mind of what Texas looked like. I didn't imagine it being where I'm at. <laughs> and so I think of it like the old west, right? And then uh, that just working with that artist, I, I ended up uh, just telling him, "Hey, I need a skeleton cowboy." <laughs> and when he first came out, they threw me something of like the uh, Texas Tech logo where the guy's got his guns out, the little cowboy dude, like oh, you yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah. 
So threw something at me, looked like that. I said, yeah, I want a skeleton. And so, so they did a skeleton version, but put the guns up in there instead of down, pointing out. And it stuck. I liked it. Um, doesn't have a name, though. That's that's the thing. I don't oh. have anything to say that that logo has a name. So what I was saying is we need, probably need to do a contest or something. Name the logo. Yeah. I mean, and we can do it on my Discord, your Discord, whoever. I don't care. But, um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool to get a character name for him. That sounds badass, man. Mm-hmm. Well, you throw, throw the winner a free pack or something, you know? Yeah, no, I'm I'll sure, throw I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure I'll Sure. You'll hook them up. That's that's a good idea. I mean, I, I like Yosemite. Just to start, you know. <laughs> that's kinda, that's, that's kind of a classic name you just don't hear anymore, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or a nickname, I guess. I don't know. It, that wasn't his real name. Sam was his real name. Sam. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Samuel. Sa- I don't know why they. Why do you think they started calling him Yosemite? How do you get that kind of a nickname? It's his cowboy name. Like, he's a kid. Camp a lot, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, man. Just never play cards with a man whose name is a city or a state. (laughs) My only advice to you kids. Um... So yeah, what what do you have coming up in the future, my friend? Like, you got anything you're working on? Yeah, yeah I'm working on a few different pipe. projects. Yeah, I've got quite a few projects I'm still working on, right? So I don't typically do multiple releases in a year. You're lucky if you get one a year out of me. Oh, I'll be sure. more along the line than one every two years. Um, Killing all yeah, those I've got plants. Yeah, I'm in the pipeline right now. And, you know, I'm working with several different friends and growers alike uh as far as uh some photos that i'm trying to i'm trying to chase down the right one uh some of the lineage and some of the back crossing on it i've got some mendo in the works nice. uh, a few of the mendo is my favorite i mean that kind of mendo i've got I've passed on friends i've got, I've got some seeds created or a mendo breath some, yeah mendo breath it's so it's, that's it's that's far. got the umami terps I wouldn't call it that. This one's more Kimmy, man. I mean, this one I would say is is it's a it's a nose okay. burner for sure. It, so you got a certain like cut of it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, right, right. right. that's started that. It's definitely like the the umami comes from the Chem family, but it's like this weird, you know, like offshoot. Yeah, offshoot of Chem, but yeah. Uh, Name like Stomper, sure. you'd have new terms, right? <laughs> Perhaps. But yeah. Anyway, the Mendo, that's one thing we're working with. And you know, along the auto line, I've got some projects in the works, but nothing really I can't release anything right now as far as uh lineage on it. Um but there Secrets. is there is a couple generations in the works. That's cool, and, man. Uh, you, know, be, uh, you know, just good to know you have some aces up your sleeve. That's all. I don't know. You don't need to tell oh me. yeah, there's there's always aces up the sleeve, and I'm always continuing checking out other different plants. You know, we always continue to grow other breeders' gear and and look and hunt and find and grow several different things out before I, I decide to say, hey, let's go ahead and ride with this one. That's awesome. Yeah, well, super interesting, man. What you guys always you know choose to work with and move forward with. At least I always find that interesting, you know. How it's like yeah. usually you you it'll be like you release a line. There's maybe let's say half a dozen new stuff. Last time it it was the Stomper series, and it seems as if you liked Raspberry Stomper out of all of them. Maybe a little more, like of all your children, you you like that one just <laughs> a little more than the others. You went ahead and like went forward with that, you know. So it's like, like I would definitely be looking at that raspberry stomper now in your in your catalog because you thought that was one of your best work, you know. Whenever the the breeder themselves decides, like, yeah, that's the one I want to like make new stuff with. You're always like, oh, all right, maybe that that was the one in that last line that. I should have, yeah. I should have gotten, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I it's always a little, a little too late. Right. So that's why we created the V2 version. Yeah. There you uh, go. 
we had the V1. Now we got the V2. We got plenty of V2 seeds, uh, but but it's you know almost a mirror or sister. It's actually kind of the great aunt, uncle, cousin, sister's roommate <laughs> relative to it. But uh, anyway, it's <laughs> somehow related. It's, it's back crossed into grandma, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it carried forward, and yeah, we ended up with some offspring that looked really, really good, and we were nice. have to slap our name on it. So. Uh, the original raspberry stomper, yeah, that that plant to me was special. It was it was something different, and I uh, liked it. Like I said, the turps and the uh, frostiness. That that plant blew the other stompers out of the water. Whenever, and we had some good ones. You know, fr- the blueberry stomper was a good frosty nugget. You know, and uh, you look at the raspberry compared to the blueberry. There's a little difference. Uh, a lot of people like the blueberry because the turps. The raspberry was really. Terps are all right, but man, that plant looks you like different. Frost, right? Yeah, man. I mean, that that plant's gorgeous. So carry it ahead, and then now working, you know, got those crosses, but that isn't what is in the background. You know that I've got those right now. Those are kind of what's on the forefront now for selling the public. But in the background, there's some other things that are going second or third generation in right now. So cool. it's just. Carrying it forward, and like I said, if it gets to where it needs to, we'll have a Gen 4, and we'll, we'll turn some loose down the road. I mean, it might be another year. Yeah, man. No, dude, it takes time, man. It takes good art. It takes, takes time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it takes me time. I know other people do it faster than I do, but I, I'm i kind of limited with, you know, what you got to work with, right? So yeah, it takes right. some time Doing it right, the right way. Outlaw obviously. out there in prohibition land. It, you know, we don't have all the space in the world right. or the resources to work with. We get it. Fucking respect, you know. Never heard Somebody anything anything bad about your shit. And the three or so strains I've grown, I've all liked. So, uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't ever fucking yeah. work to your own drum. You know, your own calendar. Don't ever feel pressure to release shit quicker. I don't, you know, I don't know, and I'm not saying other breeders do, but I'm not chasing a dollar in this game. That's not what I'm doing this for. <laughs> this is so far from it. Because, I mean, if you're getting in this game to make money, you're in it for the wrong reasons. This is a passion. That. That's what it is. It's a passion. That's all it is. Now, if I can share my passion with the world, then so be it. But maybe I make a few people happier. But, uh, yeah, it's a passion. It all is driven back when my wife was sick and, you know, got medicine that worked. And then you're driving down that rabbit hole, man. I mean, you're just going in the hole with these genetics, trying to figure out, you know, what works with what and what kind of effects does this give you and, and just chasing what you love. And then learning learning more about the genetics, saying, hey, you know, we need to breed these things. I need to get something that works for me. And so we cross them up end up with better medicine and you just keep chasing that. And then, you know, sometimes there's, there's things that get in the way and life gets in the way. It might put you on hiatus for a little bit, but if you got dubious notes, you can pick right back up where you left off. <laughs> got the notebook. Man, every breeder that's breeding Tells has a notebook. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got a, I guarantee you BGG has got a black book and it's probably about as thick as mine is. <laughs> Like a damn dictionary. Uh, that's a, I know what he does too. Very interesting. Well, yeah, if you're not taking notes, you can't do this right. Well, and it's, it's scientific, that's, you know. That's my take on it, man. <laughs> Plus, you know, short term memory loss and all that stuff. I mean, shit, if I remember what I had for lunch yesterday. Do you Tough. remember? <laughs> you, you always <laughs> think you're going to remember, like that sort of thing. You're just like, oh, there's no way I'll forget. If, if, if you ever like forget to label plants in your I'll give you one better. or anything like that. I, yeah, I've forgotten to label them for sure. Thinking I'll remember what this one is. I'll remember what this whole corner of this section of the tent is. I know what these 12 cups are. Forget it yeah. every damn time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Every, like four weeks later, he's just like, "Oh my god, I, t- I was it that one or that one? Like, it's, I know it was one of the two, but now I have no idea." So it's just, yeah, just fucking do yourself a favor. <laughs> <laughs> Write Notes. it down in a notebook. Yeah. So, Captain, have you ever been to the grocery store and your wife sent you after five things and you come home with three because you couldn't remember what the other two were? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, they're, they're well, like, you know, 
I'll walk around the store for like 15 minutes too. Like, oh, if I just see the thing, it'll jog my memory. I like, <laughs> and it doesn't. You just walk in circles, and Three check hours out later. girls <laughs> looking at you weird. Like, who is, who is this guy? Someone call security. You've been in here three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like burnt peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's a fucking zinger. I love that. Bringing it full fucking circle. Dude. Yo, it's always fun to have you on, man. Outcast, you're you're fun to talk to, man. I like I like that you have your own vibe, your own like, like yeah, it's very it's a very cool vibe you got. I like it a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah. I dig you guys too. Hell, I don't miss an episode. I uh, yeah, love you, brother. Really live or yeah. Usually just catch it on podcast form. Usually catch it on podcast on my commute to work and back yeah, you know, my nine to five. Hey man, yeah. that's, I always catch it on podcast. I catch you live once in a while. I'm a yeah, podcast we've seen you purist in there. myself. I, I love just waiting for the episode to drop. For mm-hmm. sure. But it, yeah, if you can join us live, guys, we love we love when you come show up in the chat. Yep, we go live back and forth most you know, Tuesdays, can... nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Throw your two cents in while you're there live. Uh, we we do see all the messages, guys. We we you know we see y'all. We, we appreciate every single one of you. Um. One Great. more time, Outcast. Yo, where can we find you? Where can we find your beans? Uh, so if you go on Instagram, Outcast Genetics with a K. Yeah, with a K. Uh, Outcast Genetics. It ought to pull it up uh, inside my links. There, I've got one link to the uh, storefront, which is uh, Big Cartel. It's a Big Cartel storefront, and then the other link goes over to the CD Seed Bank. Very connect group out there, and they, they hook it up with freebies too. They're a great group cool. of guys, but yeah, good people. If uh, you know, if let's say we like we're a Discord member in the community already, we, like we hit you up on Discord. Uh, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a Discord as well. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, you, uh, can, we can do a little personal like. Uh, do you, do you douche a business that way? Oh uh, yeah, I can for sure. Um, okay, yeah, we cool. can do business email, Discord, whatever you want to do. Uh, Word. We ran a grow along with uh, your sister podcast, Cultivation Conversation. We did grow <laughs> with, my, I, uh, with my sister. What the fuck? You talking <laughs> about my sister again? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about bringing it full circle. <laughs> oh oh shit! shit. I mean, I, uh, the Cultivation Conversation is crafting cannabis. Rudy and that bunch over there. Nice. Right, all right. Cool. Over. Cool. So give, give them guys a shout. They're great guys. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Grow along over there. All right. All right. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you need to have those guys on. That's who you need to bring on is Rudy and, and Blackwater and Early Bird. Just have them all on one screen. Okay. That way. Oh, that's a lot of people. Chaos. Think, I love it. Do you think yeah, we could do that during chaos. Mercury retrograde and just. Uh... Oh, I think it's the only way we could. <laughs> Yeah, rip the band-aid off and get after it. All right, all right. <laughs> I, think, I think we could probably arrange that, man. I, I do love those guys. So Yeah, yeah they're good dudes. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you can find just on the storefront. Hit me up on Instagram. I am a member of Discord, uh, just Outcast Genetics on Discord. Uh, I'm a member of Cultivation Conversation, the the YAG as well. Member of those guys. And then i uh, got my own Discord and your other sister over there, your your steps cousin's sister, uh, <laughs> Captain Cannabis. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm I'll, gonna I'll, I'll check out that episode too. You were on their show, I presume, then too. Yeah, we just did one. Uh, uh, I guess it's been about a month or so back. Oh, it was, it was a little while back, but it was uh, me, Alabrihe, and BGG. All yeah, it was got like the Breeder oh, Collection. It was whoa. a great episode. Fucking gangbang, oh. huh? <laughs> yeah, we sat down. All three of us did a panel panel deal with them, and uh, it turned out it was a pretty cool episode. Those guys, I mean, That's they badass. pass on their knowledge too. They they know some shit. Sure. sure. Yeah, I love that, cool. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, guys, check out Crafting Cannabis podcast. Um, and check out Outcast Genetics. For Christ's yeah, sake, yeah. if you haven't already, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> for real, where Craft you fucking going? Auto flower breeder. No way. 
yeah, get your shit together. Support a real dude who's making real, real gear. So, well, sharing my gear, right? So, yeah, the stuff he likes. It's, yeah, it's the stuff I like. It's it's a replica. Like, I'm not saying you're going to like it, but maybe there's something in there that you love. I know it's oh, not up man. some people's alley. Yeah, if you're doing it for yourself and you know and you're liking it, then the there's a great chance that other people will like it as well. There obviously yeah, lose some that, that don't. That's okay. But like I challenge you I to, to to not find something that they like in your fucking lineup. I mean, fuck. Oh, fruit and gas, them. man. Fruit and gas. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll chase the meat turf and get a slim gym or something. <laughs> And no you need. go down that, no that Mendo really, no breath need. line. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You'll find it. The ones, you know, you say that, and it, it may come out. I mean, we might back, you know, end up back crossing into it. And hey, it may man. pop up somewhere in the genetics. Never no know. Telling. Never know, right? I, was, well, I mean, the one I've got right now, though, I'm chasing it. it it's, it's Kim. It's Kim Gas. It's, there you go. That's where it's at. And uh, But like I said, if you go back, there's no telling if we back cross it. So if you go back, you don't know how it's going to behave, man. You, you, it's like a lot of sometimes when you cross A with B, you don't always get C. You know what I mean? It's like it shoots off in a whole new direction, and like the great great grandparents show up and start to say hi, and you're like, "What? What the fuck did you come from?" (laughs) Like, you know, you ever see the the people that are like, you know. Five foot five woman marries five foot eight man, and their child is six foot five. Like, how how the fuck does that happen? It's in there somewhere, you know. Oh yeah, it's in there. It comes out in weird ways sometimes. Genetics are a curious thing, my friend. But yeah, that's again why we like to talk to you guys. That work with work with these things. Try to get some sort of knowledge from you. I think we accomplished that. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope you got something. For sure. If not, you got my philosophy on things. (laughs) That's enough. (laughs) And we we got, you know, your your contributions to the community in seed form. So Mm -hmm. go check out Outcast. Uh, Check us out on Discord, on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, how we keep our, our lights on. And, uh, we appreciate thank you all, all of you our guys. Patrons. We love you guys. Yeah, we appreciate. We love everybody, the and thanks for the chat for being here. For sure, and I I appreciate all three of you, Monster and G three in particular, for taking time out of their week every week and coming to talk with me. The pleasure is mine, and we appreciate you guys too. Yeah, we appreciate everybody. <sighs> thank you. It's a big old, big old gang bang. Big old group hug, everybody. Gang bang. Cool. And until until next time, keep yourself high. Don't get caught.